mum and I was like, Dad, why don't you like me? And my mum was like, he loves you. And I was like, it's not love that I'm asking. It's like, why don't you like me? And my dad eventually said I was a disappointment to him because I hadn't fulfilled those material goals we were speaking about earlier, the house and the job and the wife and the kids. And uh, it really shifted a big part of our relationship because then he could start to recognise that I'm not the person that he wanted me to be, that I've found my way in this world and he can respect me for what I'm doing with Sacred Sons, what I'm doing at home here, like with my community. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Today is a following conversation with Peter Bennett. He calls himself the men's work coach on Instagram. You can click any of the links in the description to follow his journey or reach out and ask him any questions that you feel called to. Let me know what lands the most, what resonates, interact with us in the comments. We'll always endeavor to get back to you. Appreciate you being here. Enjoy the episode with Peter Bennett. <sighs> This is actually how I like to start conversations is with mm. a few breaths. So if you're interested, we can on it. Yeah, yeah. lead, yeah. man, if you need yeah. to. That'd be cool. So yeah, just uh, dropping into the body, closing down the eyes if you feel called. <sighs> Feeling the ground beneath, supporting the sky above, expanding. And where earth meets sky within, that inner horizon, a place of peace, prosperity. Coming back to conscious breathing. Maybe even shaking the neck, rolling the shoulders, just dropping into the body, being aware of any sensations. And what we'll do is three breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth, starting in three, two, one. Hanu. Buka. Hanu. Buka. Holding at the top, Hanu. Tip an air in for your family. For the ancestors. For yourself. <sighs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. All good. Hey. So lush, being in your space. Mm, welcome. Mm. Mm. Feeling welcome. Mm. Really, honor that. So maybe just speak to the language that you were guiding us yeah. through there. Well, um, interestingly, this is something I've learned through Sacred Sons. Um, one of my first trainings was out in Maui, in Hawaii. And uh, one of our brothers, the leader, uh, Kale, uh, is of um, the people there. So he taught us a few Hawaiian words. And hanu and pukaha is inhale and exhale. Mm. And so I tend to bring that through when I do my breath work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in homage. You know. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Sacred Sons then. So yeah. when did you first catch wind of Sacred Sons? And for the people that don't know who Sacred Sons are, mm. maybe you could lay some foundations and speak to that initially. Because yeah. I think it's a big entry point to the conversation, um, the work they're doing. I definitely want to honor that, but I definitely want to dive into all things Peter. Yeah. So maybe we'll go there first and then awesome. we can, yeah. Well, um, to begin with, Sacred Sons is a brotherhood. Um, we are international now, actually, um, just Growing this quite year. quick. Yeah, so it began three or so, maybe four years ago. I only caught wind of it last year um, off the back of their social media um, impact, like huge following on Instagram and lots of great videos on YouTube, uh, TikTok, things like that. And um, I'd already been doing men's work, um, holding councils, holding circles here in England, got facilitated by the Mankind Project and uh, saw this amazing video called Beautiful Burden where some of the leaders are speaking to this indigenous remembrance. And as someone who's um, multinational myself, I was really cool to, to learn more about what they did because they're working with the land in a way that I hadn't seen here in the UK and um, is really tribal and really primal. And I was like, oh, I feel that. I feel that masculine energy within me. And so, yeah, Sacred Sons, this brotherhood, really sort of focus on masculine alchemy, a lot of transmutation of like stuck energies, toxic masculinity, as some people call it. Just um, the immature masculine, a lot of boys who are kind of stuck in their power and don't know how to shift 
uh, these narratives. So the work that we do is bringing men through this kind of initiation back into leadership, into sovereignty. And that's what drew me to them. And so in March of this year, I went out to the States and did a whole like three month uh, adventure, a quest back to myself and back into um, these old principles, these like indigenous wisdom traditions, as they're called. And uh, haven't stopped since. I've like, been running events here in the UK. We did our first EMX embodied masculine experience for like 70 men this past weekend in Devon, the first in England. And uh, yeah, really like the future is bright. You know, we've got lots of things coming up in the next year. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, they're getting a lot of things for me right in the social media space, mm. how they're portraying s these immersive experiences. Like just in terms of social media, I think they they are one they are one um, one school of work that's doing like really impactful stuff, but and just promoting it in a way that feels good for me. Yeah. Like the way they're just they're really clear on the messaging and they're really clear on um, the mission yeah. and how it comes through because we see things online and through some sort of media. But like for that to speak to you, to, it's, it's not easy, mm. but it looks effortless, you know, mm. even the way they're filming certain things. And I imagine it's a completely different experience when you're there. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it definitely gives an insight as to what yeah. happens. Do you feel that when you're, when you, when you well, obviously first caught, caught yeah. wind of them um, and, and being drawn into what they're demonstrating, what they're standing for mm. and how they're showcasing that to us? Mm. Um in going there was there anything that took you by surprise oh well i i found just the um like the reverence for the work that they do really inspiring um i hadn't realized how connected to like the lands in which they work on um it, it was something that like being in england i hadn't ever really like realized my my british heritage my father's mother's from like near manchester we got irish heritage and until i started working with um, sacred sons i hadn't really looked at that part of my like dna my genetic makeup and um that's what like really inspired me and surprised me was how like tapped in a lot of the leaders are and the brothers who are coming through are on their own stories and and how much it, it plays a part in where they are now um, so yeah, I went to, to San Diego, uh, Jacumba in the desert, just outside of the, the town, the city and like the mountains, the desert, just the way that the rocks were speaking to us was like really powerful. And yeah, I carry that with me wherever I go. Mm. So you were doing men's work before that holding council yeah. here. Yeah. So what things came up for you in going there that you hadn't perhaps places you didn't go before or mm. was there anything that you were like, whoa, this is even deeper. Ooh, well, you've probably seen on the social media, there's a lot of like conflict or ritual combat. And that's something that I hadn't ever done in the work here in the UK. Um, a lot of what I was doing was very much like talking, sharing, supporting one another, accountability. So we'd set goals in our um, in our councils and then we'd follow up and make sure the brothers were sticking to their intentions. Um, but the combat, the conflict aspect was like really important um, because I realized that it's not as easy as just talking about things and, and sharing. Sometimes um, it's good to be shaken up and uh, being punched in the face or wrestling someone down to the ground or having that like physical aspect has been really like beneficial for me and it's inspired me to get more and more into into my into my body and actually get into boxing and different martial arts and start to practice things that I never knew I, I would be doing here in my like mid thirties, you know. Mm. Yeah, one thing with those practices, <laughs> I feel it teaches you how tough you're not. Mm. You know, you can real be a humbling humbles, experience. Sure. Oh yeah. I'm gassed, I'm like short of breath, I'm yeah. you know, I'm I'm, I'm struggling here or how hard it is to actually you know be in those situations and all the hormones that's kicking around mm. um it's one thing to walk the streets and feel like you can you're confident and mm. you can handle yourself but then just be thrown into the arena yeah. 
it's a humbling experience, For right? Sure. And it, and it also feels like this remembrance piece around what um, my ancestors, what the ancestors were doing, um, sharpening one another through combat, um, maybe in times of peace, maybe in times of war, but it's a way for the brothers and potentially the sisters as well in these tribes to come together to celebrate one another and to call each other in, into physical um, optimization, into mental optimization, spiritual optimization. So, yeah, I, I, I love the, the physical aspect. I love um, getting punched in the face and <laughs> punching people back. <laughs> if there's anything that's a part of our lineage, it's that, right? Yeah, for sure. Sharpening each other. Uh -huh. But being humble in it yeah. uh, and respecting one another. You have a new respect for people when they step into that space with you. Mm -hmm. And know. trust as well. That's mm -hmm. one thing I really realized. Like these brothers who I was like in very deep processes with speaking a lot about um, like the pain that we shared, the suffering. Uh, and then when you go into something like that where you agree on um for example, no punches to the face, or maybe you have like, I'm going to go 50%, can you meet me at 50%? And you meet each other in that arena, um, there's a like a renewed sense of trust, and it really feels like you can, like, you've got each other's backs, and you mm -hmm. can go into battle together. Mm -hmm. You know I'm good friends with Peter Middleton? Yeah, yeah. beautiful. And I had, I've had, he's probably the most prolific guest I've had on. Uh -huh. He was one of the first on the podcast like a beautiful. few years ago. Yeah, yeah we yeah, met in yeah. London a few years ago, and, and David, Miller as well. Uh -huh. King David. Yeah. yeah, brother. These are all bros who we went to Scotland Prime. So that's one mm -hmm. of the, the smaller um, offerings that we do with like the co-founders who attend as well. And um, yeah, we went to Scotland, we went to the Lowlands and I got a chance to meet them in the ring, in, in the sharing circles, meet them in the ring, like combat wise. I've actually yet to fully like um, spar with them both, but like I see them and like, I truly believe these are, these are brothers and these are people I can trust with my family. Mm. Where do you see this going? Where do you see Sacred Sons? It feels like Good there's no question. boundaries at the moment. Good question. You know, the way that it's growing is that Europe is very much getting activated at the moment. So we have um, plans, um, we have intentions for 2023 to, to bring more country, countries online. Um, Germany, Portugal, places like that. So growing the brotherhood, having leaders come through who can hold their own events. Um, I love the idea of getting some land as well and, and going back to the old ways, like being in um, in reverence with nature, working with the rhythms of the seasons and things like that. And um, Pete, me personally, like when I was in America, I worked on a farm for the first time in my life and I started planting seeds and I was like, oh, this is like a metaphor for like how I'm showing up in the world and mm. harvesting my own gifts. So I really see that as part of this um, this growth edge for me. It's like getting back to the land potentially moving out of London, moving out of the city and having more of a deeper connection with Mother Earth. Mm, poignant time then. <laughs> Lots of things looming. It's interesting how we get pulled in these directions and almost when we start to do this this kind of work, it's it brings us back to what we've always done in a way mm. and it feels like more right than, than anything else. Mm -hmm. It's powerful and just being around a fire mm -hmm. consistently, showing up around the fire, mm -hmm. Like that has just such a, a powerful, it's like the one thing that we've been doing and the most simple thing we've been doing for so long. Yeah, yeah it was the one thing I was craving in like lockdown, for example. Yeah. I was just craving just to be around the fire out in the open. Yeah. That was the one, That was the only thing I missed. Yeah. It was weird. Um, Same for me. I, I was actually um, blown away during lockdown at how much England had to offer. Um, I was one of those people who'd go abroad and find like exotic um, environments. Mm -hmm. And then when I was unable to travel, I was like, oh, okay, well, what's England got to offer? And the same thing, I was drawn to the fire, I was drawn to camping, when I stayed in the Bothy in, in um, the Highlands and uh, in Scotland. And it was like, wow, this is all on our doorstep. And it really felt like remembrance. It really felt like this like ancient um, birthright that we all have and how much at peace I feel around the fire and cooking my food and mm. going foraging and things like that. Yeah, birthrights yeah. that aren't our rights. <laughs> it's crazy. We can go down many rabbit holes here. Mm. Uh, just on Sacred Sons, do, do you feel, what, what, what do you feel is the most transferable thing that you're seeing and witnessing from men that come to these things and then go back to their lives because like, we all know, like, whether it's a retreat, whether it's an immersion, whether it's something where you're accountable, you have a certain structure, mm -hmm. you have the fire, you have the elements, you, you're really drawn into that. And it's like, it's a great, 
it almost we need to create those spaces for allow us to go deeper because they're not in our day to day mm. as easy. Mm. We can create them somewhat, but it's you know it's you throw yourself in and you're going to discover a lot in a short space of time. Where do you see the most transferable things happening for men that you're perhaps staying in touch with or that are going back to their families? Mm. Big big part of it is uh, alignment. So brothers realizing that in some cases like whether it's their personal life their professional life like things aren't in alignment for them they're realizing oh like i'm not quite happy in this job or maybe there's a relationship that they ought to speak to and start to bring back into alignment so many of them will go to these trainings and go home and after a couple of weeks realize okay these are some adjustments i'm going to make and so accountability is a big part of that checking in with the brothers we've got a big network whether it's on the sacred sons app or through various different um yeah, connection points but um really it's about like the the finding where they are most at peace most at purpose actually and uh, and supporting them through that um but yeah it's, it's it's the same as like a lot of the work that people do whether it's spiritual work or self-development it's like how can you find who you are in all of this and um be really strong and like um direct assertive with your energy and not get lost in in all the noise you know mm, yeah beautiful so Peter, born in Hammersmith, Peter. raised in Bangladesh. Yeah, Bangladesh, Glastonbury, a bunch of places, yeah. So what do I need to know about your journey and growing up that's going to give me uh, an insight into why you found this work? Mm, I actually have an interesting story that only got um, illuminated for me um, last year. A okay. sister was saying, you know, because I, I have a story. My, my dad um, had three best friends all called Peter before I was born. And so he named me Peter after these men. And uh, she was like, oh, well, that was your first men's circle. That was your first council. And I was like, oh, yeah. In some ways, like my dad having all these best friends, me being named after them kind of birthed me into this like men's circle. And since that, I realized that even my life, like my brothers at school, I kind of brought them together and like connected a lot of people. And it was always very much about brotherhood and friendship and having each other's backs and things like that. So, um, yeah, I guess in some ways, you know, that's my origin story. Mm. Yeah. and how about growing up what was it what was it like because I often when we if this is my own I guess um, observation of, of this kind of inner work let's say it's always going back to us as as children it's going back to our teens our, our kind of early development years mm -hmm. where we then start to reframe and rewrite those stories we perhaps were told that were a bit limiting or yeah. there's a lot there for us to, to mm. dive into. Mm. And that's what I find things, this is where the gold is. You know, it's that, that little boy, Peter, who, mm. who perhaps, you know, didn't get certain needs met. So it's mm. like, it's listening and then, and, and finding that wisdom within that. The inner child work, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And I hear that. I, I definitely have had a lot of insight just this past weekend with the EMX in Devon that we did um, around my wounded boy. And uh, something that comes up with my father, as much as I love him, was very strict and um, kind of um, would have always like put me down in a trying to motivate me kind of way. You know, oh, you're useless, hopeless, that type of thing. And we kind of have this favoritism where like my sister would be put on a pedestal and like the creative one and things like that. So I always had this sense of like injustice ingrained into me and like feeling like I wasn't truly seen, um, acknowledged or respected. Um, and that played into different roles, whether I stood in, like as a teenager with my brothers at school and like, kind of feeling like maybe as a leader, I didn't show up and then other leaders in my group would come and they'd take the shot and take the glory away from me and like I always felt like I would slowly and quietly like step back into the shadows and that then became this like kind of a barrier a, a wall that I put up and I lost myself in that and so when I speak about my journey I talk about like the dark night of the soul um, like being um, someone who like has a lot of love and really wanted to connect with people but um, somehow in, in, through the process just became completely disconnected and we used drugs and alcohol and women as a way to kind of feel again and feel like important or get that approval get that validation um, and gratefully so I was then drawn to go to South America and get down the Amazon and live with the Shipibo for a few weeks and uh, partake in plant medicine ayahuasca and things like that and that began the journey of self-discovery and coming back home mm. yeah. yeah who the Shipibo then like, what, what was your what was your time like there magical it's a really like um, I mean just the way of living is so much simpler than it is in London than mm. it is in the city I'm sure a lot of people can relate to kind of having all these like um 
like driven for material gain or you know the job the promotion the car yeah. the house it's very evident here i find walking the streets it's like a lot of transactions happening yeah exactly. whether that's yeah. physical or emotional yeah. it's like mm -hmm. whereas in in the amazon at least my experiences of it were a lot more like um exchanges energy exchanges um people like saw me for who i was and and i was able to like hang out with the kids we taught them english we played football with them and i felt like oh wow like i actually like have this joy in me that i've been suppressing or that had been suppressed by my life's experiences and um that started to bring me out of my shell again and i was like ah oh, the simple way just like hunting for your food foraging um day by day just living you know in each moment and it really brought me back to what was most important to me and that was like family um like respect um, integrity just like the the building blocks of who i am today mm, yeah refre that, for me my values have changed big time mm. do doing more of their inner work i come back though and revisit the family mm. and certain values haven't changed for them but then it's hard for me to see, say, family was a big value. Say, fam family is a big value of mine. Going back, like, I have so much time for my family. But that may be different for them. I'm not saying they haven't got time for me, but it's just there's a difference there. Yeah. And what's it, what's it like for you going back, w having different values, coming back to friends? Because mm. I think that part of the integration, but it's the hardest part to um, shift and change or, or, or reframe certain things. You know, family and friends and how much you value them mm. can be a big one and then coming back and and a lot of people still seeing you in the same light mm -hmm. but you're there's like a you know, i've changed here but mm. i'm not quite seen for that you know what great question because there's definitely something that's very present for me particularly now with christmas and the festivities coming like mm. spending a lot more time with my family um knowing that like patience is a virtue and that they will see me in time and if they don't like i'm releasing that expectation too um but it took um going to medicine festival last year and a wonderful conversation with um zach avery one of the organizers fair dear brother of mine about this rage that I was carrying and it was not mine it was my father's 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 father and I was like ah so I got back after that festival and had a really like deep heart to heart with my dad lots of tears lots of shouting and screaming I was like dad why don't you like me and my mom was like he loves you and I was like it's not love that I'm asking it's like why don't you like me and my dad eventually said I was a disappointment to him because I hadn't fulfilled those material goals we were speaking about earlier the house and the job and the wife and the kids and uh, it really shifted a big part of our relationship because then he could start to recognize that I'm not the person that he wanted me to be that I've found my way in this world and he can respect me for what I'm doing with sacred sons what I'm doing at home here like with my community um, and uh, yeah so to answer that you know I, my friends as well I started to acknowledge and recognize that the work I'm doing is very much me um, I used to be a bit like come on you know trying to like get them onto one of our trainings and things like that but in time if they feel called to join they can but I'm not really like um, I don't like hinge my my like self worth on uh, on them seeing me in that way anymore. Mm. You know? And I don't do the things that I used to do with them. I don't go to the football and get lashed and go out on town and make a mockery of myself. I'm very much like I'm, I'm a sober brother. I drink here and there, but what I am is like very like in my body. And if things don't feel right, then I'm just gonna say no. Oh my nose, sovereignty. Beautiful. <laughs> Do you think we'll always want acceptance and love from our parents? Or can we reach a point where we stop? Um, I would say that it's a human trait to have that um, drive. Um, however, Vipassana was a really big part of me releasing a lot of that because I realized that these sensations in my body this reaction was just from like what they call sankara it's like just just the same thing again and again like driving a groove in my in my psyche you know being rejected or getting the validation from playing a role but when i started to get more into my body through meditation through breath through these embodiment practices um i started to realize oh no like i don't have to play that role i don't have to react the way i used to and so um Yes, definitely as a part of me that would love my parents to see me and my friends to acknowledge me and, you know, the, as I do myself. But um, I'm slowly dropping that and recognizing that as long as I know who I am, that's the most important thing.
Hmm. Yeah, for me, what's got in the way of that is a, a like real energy of like wanting to, mm. wanting to be seen, mm. wanting to be heard, wanting to be accepted. And that gets in the way of them being able to, mm. because it's like, it feels like too forceful or it's just, it's just like something not quite present, mm. not quite authentic about it. Neediness. There you go. Yeah. Needs and wants. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely my journey it's like the more i can just sit and be and be responsible like my ability to respond and and have and being for come from that place mm. and just also just knowing like who you are what you want and what you what you do need mm. like coming coming from that place but really deeply knowing that mm. and not pretending or, or if you don't know that that's okay mm -hmm. but if you you think you do but you don't really mm -hmm. like it's it's an energy the words do somewhat of a of an exchange but it's like people just feel it mm -hmm. so it's like okay more work needs to be done there bro there's loads of power, power in silence as well um i've just realized that this past weekend like being one of the leaders and having my own team and acknowledging that sometimes like i just don't have the words to express what's here and being okay with that and it's the same with family with friends like I don't need to tell people anymore who I am like there's moments where that comes up for sure and sometimes I'm like yeah look at all this amazing stuff like why haven't you asked me how the weekend went type of thing you know but I'm realizing again like if I can sit in that in that silence and be still um, then that neediness or that drive the wants and the desires like start to quiet and it's like oh like I can just receive what you're sharing i can see where you're at and, and and like respect and acknowledge that as opposed to trying to like force my will on someone else mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. yeah that resonates what about boundaries where do boundaries come in for you that's the warrior bro that's a big part of what we do sacred sons part of stepping into the ring uh, in the physical combat state and also like in life um but boundaries is a big part of me um starting to drop the people please uh I know many men or women who are listening might acknowledge or recognize that. It's like I've in the past like not had boundaries because I didn't want to upset people. Um, but I learned actually to be more assertive or to begin with, like, what is it that I don't want? You know, what are the things in life that aren't like treating me right where where's this like where's there not a full body yes and then i'm ah okay so i can start to write these things down i do a lot of journaling um meditation as well and i start to realize okay so these are parts of my life where they're not in alignment and the more i can be boundary the more i can speak to them the more i can be my warrior um, and use like sometimes that uncomfortable energy whether it's like healthy rage sometimes there's like anxiety as well if i can speak to those parts and be like clear then um, people don't step over the line. And if they do, there's a bit of a buffer and I can say, excuse me, like, can you just take a step back? And, you know, we're all in a in accordance, in a, in a healthy, harmonious way of relating. <laughs> <laughs> and how have relationships been for you? How, how's Ooh, that terrain? Yeah. Because I feel like we can, yeah, we, we, we do, do a lot of this stuff with other men and it's not till we get into a, a relationship or be in relationship with another in a really intimate way mm. that we deeply care about and want mm. certain things and need certain things that dance in that in that setting can really like evoke a lot of stuff that sometimes is not even possible without it you know yeah. uh, like how's that been for you over the years mm. and yeah how is how how do you feel like that is a space hmm i'm gonna reframe my question do you feel that that work can only be done in sacred union with another mm. in that intimate space and without it mm. we can be unconsciously go through our life and, and not look at certain parts Take you know words right out of my mouth i was going to talk about tantra but i'll, I'll start um, from the beginning mm. in some ways um you know growing up i i definitely was objectified in some ways like oh what a cute kid blonde hair blue eyes like i was different looking as a child and so was always told from other people that i'd be a heartbreaker and mm. like that kind of became the self-fulfilling prophecy and especially when i was in my dark night of the soul like women were a way to like find this intimacy that i didn't have for myself i didn't have self-worth i didn't have the self-esteem that i do now um so i was seeking meaning through meaningless 
relating, whether it was like penetrative, like physical, sexual. Um, and I realized like a few years ago that it wasn't fulfilling me that actually like after I would have like a climax with a woman, like I didn't know them. I didn't really want to be around them. And that was like really jarring because I was like, oh, like how can I speak this? And because I was a people pleaser too and didn't want to hurt them, my boundaries were out of the window. Um, but what I realized through Tantra particularly was that there are varying levels of intimacy. Like just having this conversation right now is very intimate, you know, speaking from the heart, being embodied, um, sharing like some truths and, and probably some secrets as well um, is where I like to like meet someone. And that can be through the eyes and eye gazing. It can be through like synchronized breathing um, before even like the, the massage, the touch and things like that. So that's kind of my like uh, my standard now that's the benchmark to connect with a woman romantically with a sister um i have to feel the trust i have to feel that kind of um the reverence of this sacred union the potential for like going deep before i can start to like um even like uh, imagine or like uh, fantasize about being more you know but that's that's tough man i mean i've, I've definitely mm -hmm. been placed recently where i've started to see my own like oh like these these spikier parts um and i send mixed signals um someone recently <laughs> someone recently called it a shit sandwich where like you put like compliments and nice things and then like in the middle you hide the, the nugget of truth which is like i don't really want to be with you or i'm not feeling you or like uh -huh. i prefer to just be a friend and mm -hmm. i kind of got called out on that recently i was like yeah it's great hanging out with you and i'm really enjoying this however like i'm just not feeling like it in this moment potentially maybe but the reality of what mm. i was saying was actually no i don't want to see you as a romantic interest yeah it's hard man it's what comes up for me is we want to really honor them as a, just a human first yeah. but then that guy kind of gets in the way of just actually speaking to like you can really honor someone and and, and be very meta about certain things and be be the observer of the situation and like I think living in the moment like that way into a relationship is like well, all we have is now mm -hmm. so why why aren't we just in this right now like why do we have to go further but you kind of do have to respect their humanness within that for sure. because especially for for women yeah. like that safety aspect and that knowing knowing is based on like safety it's like i need to be certain about certain things mm -hmm. and it's like gets tricky it gets yeah. it gets gets into the, the dance. dude i mean that that whole living in the moment was a good like um excuse for me in the past hey come on you <laughs> we know we only have now we only have now and it's um it's, it's a cheeky way of like manipulating someone actually to be honest and and now like it's kind of twofold for me because I, I hear what you're saying like there's a, there's an element of like mm. being in the moment acknowledging this person's human they're seeing beyond that and like connecting with their being their spirit but at the same time like does this have longevity because i'm in it for the long haul um love to start a family get that piece of land um have children things like that um but I just don't if I, unless I'm feeling it in that moment, then I can't really like express and, and, and go down that road together. And that's kind of been a big block at times for me because it means that I'm maybe stopping things before they even get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel we can know thing on paper, like something that ticks all the boxes. Mm. But if we're not feeling it, if it's not a sacred yes. Mm. Like, what do we do with that you know yeah. I, I th we live in the head quite a lot anyway and we do have to rationalize somewhat to some things that just won't work we have to like you know logistics come into play and and like actual real life um situations like you might deeply fall in love with someone who has lives on the other side of the world and it's like well is this gonna work like you're not willing to move and i'm i'm here mm -hmm. So it's like that rational mind has to come into play, right? Yeah. And really, and really kind of lean into that side of things. It's a, it's a dance, right? It's a dance. It's the balance of the masculine and the feminine as well. Um, for me, you know, there's the body aspect. And I love that about relating to women when I'm like fully in my body and like we're able to express ourselves in like this sensual, sacred, sexual way. Um, but then the masculine aspect, the, the, the mind, the, the intellect, um, that kind of penetrative life force comes into play. And that's where like, okay, is this legit? Does this have legs? Can we walk together in a good way? And um, I've not yet really felt that. Mm. Yeah. Damn. <laughs>
<laughs> no, it's around be- the corner. Yeah. Beautiful, because when it when it happens, it will happen for sure. And it's not that you settled, you know. I think yeah. that's that's a a big point. Yeah, that yeah, don't settle. Well, I I I had moments where I was very close. Um, one of my most recent uh, long term. I call it like a situation ship where I was in a relationship, but we were seeing each other and it's pretty much mutually exclusive. Um, I just realized that we have so much, like so many differences as much as I love her still. And we're not speaking because we're giving each other distance. Um, like I just enjoy being around her. And it was just like every day, it's like being with my best friend and I'd wake up in her bed or she'd wake up here and it'd be like, ah, you know, like joy and bliss. And it would fill my days with, with light and, and love. And um, we just kept knocking heads because the communication wasn't there. We went into the same things, like doing this work. When I'd speak about like what I was doing with Sega Sons, like it didn't really land. And she's very much still in her like DJ party place. And it was like, ah, oh, but that's not something that I'm really interested in anymore so we had to have like a like an adult conversation in Mm. august and it was like i think this is over it was like yeah it's over it's like the third time we closed the container but this time was for good you know Mm. yeah Yeah, timing can be a big one as well right Mm. yeah appreciate appreciate this man i appreciate (laughs) we're talking about this for sure is is it a life for you is it present for you i feel like this is something that there's there's stuff there for sure yeah (laughs) thanks for being my therapist yeah (laughs) Yeah. uh please share we yeah we relate to, to people like that's one powerful thing that you come from circles it's like you, you learn a lot from people who are navigating certain things and you're like ah I didn't see it in that way mm. or, or maybe there's a part of me that isn't able to speak to it mm. but I think talking about relationships is a powerful one I don't think I do it enough on this podcast and and, and share like man to man like how we are navigating struggles because there's a, you know we're human yeah. and we have to understand that at first um for me, yeah, it, I think it's a as a sacred yes there. I think I've 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 had it before. I've just come out for a long term relationship, and I find that a tricky ground to 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 talk about to tread on in terms of the podcast because I I really want to share everything. There's nothing nothing that I wouldn't talk about. Test me, but like I wouldn't talk about on the podcast. Uh, but then I have to respect other people, and I found that. I think it was a podcast with Peter and I had to edit it because mm. there was something I just didn't clarify mm. with someone and it was like, oh, what am I doing? Like, there yeah. needs to be that, needs to have awareness of, mm. of other people. You can be okay talking about something, but if, if that person, it's like the whole kind of situation where you, I guess, sharing a lot of stuff, but you're recognizing that that person you're with doesn't want to. And that's, mm. that's the interesting ground, but maybe I'm skirting around the actual subject. Um, yeah can i go for it yeah a couple of a couple of suggestions um one is like confidentiality right yes it's it's like the first agreement we speak Mm -hmm. about with sacred sons and in that confidentiality it's speaking from your own experiences as opposed to someone else's so we don't use names of other people their stories but sometimes it's like how did that impact you Mm. and that's a, a, a way to reframe that experience potentially and also we say ownership own your ship and it's like speaking from the eye like how did you I experienced that. Um, I noticed when you were sharing there, it was like we, and kind of like there's a sense of like, you know, um, just giving away the responsibility. What do they call it? Diminished responsibility. Is, mm. that, is that the phrase? Nice. Yeah. And it's like, you know, speaking from the eye, it's like, okay, I'm taking ownership of this. I can be accountable in whatever happened or what didn't happen, you know. So mm. just an invitation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I 100% agree. I, I, <laughs> yes, I. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we agree. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Mm-hmm. I think that is so important. Like Even in those situations where you are um, yeah. coming to a deep space with someone, it's speaking from your experience and, and the you statements never yeah. really help. Like, yeah. I don't know when saying, well, you're like this, you've done that, yeah. they done, they've done this. It's like, it's not really helpful. Yeah. Like speaking from your own experiences. Me. <laughs> 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 but I do that as well, obviously. Yeah. When I say, oh, you know, people do this or people do that, it's like, no, yeah. just, again, for sure. speak from your own perspective. It, it's it very helps. hard when it's in your habits. It, you know? Yeah, it, it definitely helps. And um, I've, I've I've been, like, 
I don't want to say guilty because that's not the right word, but I've definitely been in that frame mm. of mind and expressing. And I realized the more I speak from the eye, the more it's like, oh, okay, I can be clear. And there's something that um, I read in The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, mm -hmm. which is uh, be impeccable with your words. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I'm very like aware of, like using less words, not trying to be clever, just speaking from the heart. And when I say I, like it all comes from a pure channel. Mm, beautiful. More often than not. Was it words, worlds, and worth? Yeah, worth. yeah. I love that. Probably, love that little there, framework. Yeah, yeah. My, my Instagram reel. Yeah, um, but yeah, thank you. You know, and if there is anything you want to speak to, you know, like I, I definitely am stepping more into like the relationship um, coaching and, and couples and things like that because mm -hmm. it's been something that's been really present for me. And like you might have seen on my Instagram, I've been on like multiple dating shows and things like that. And oh, no, I yeah, so I've I've kind of been in the world of like oh, you know, charming and you know, just like kind of I, I, I resist saying manipulate but ultimately that's what it is like just turning it on up and being like hey you know and like using chat up lines and mm. and getting women to like fall for me um but then realizing like oh i don't want this and kind of pushing them away um so like what i speak to with the men that i work with is like have you got any women who are friends like how many sisters are in your lives like cultivate those like loving um what's the word like um non-intimate non not not non-intimate like non-sexual non-romantic relationships um because then you start to acknowledge and recognize that this is a sister this isn't just like a woman you don't i don't objectify them and that's something something i've been really sharpening as a tool because i've had experiences this year where i was with like amazing women who on paper like you say taking the boxes would be an awesome partner but i was like i need to go slow like i can i trust this person can i really speak like full and express myself in all ways and it be received and so like patience again slowing down has been like my my main um, philosophy around that mm, going slow yeah going slow. that was coming up for me mm. in a recent experience with someone and uh, there was no rush for me i was i didn't really want to rush anything and it felt like for me it, it just wasn't needed but then loads of things was coming up would be about like masculinity and I've I felt like saying to myself I'm the woman here mm -hmm. and I was like well, where's that coming from what's that statement about mm -hmm. and I was like unraveling that mm -hmm. and it's quite obvious like you always stereotypically would would expect that in your own mind from another another person another woman um and I was like wow it's just bringing up a lot about what stories I've had about what it means to be a man that we need to just penetrate, go quick, and yeah, yeah. yeah. How how yeah. does how does it feel for you to be more in that feminine aspect of like seeking? Um, it was uncomfortable. Yeah, that situation was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to speak too much about it, but it was it was it was certainly uncomfortable, and it was just leaning into that, like just sitting with it. I didn't need to do anything about that, but it was just honouring that that was what I was choosing to do, and just letting those old stories fall away mm. and just crying if I needed to and just just being with that emotion of, of, of who I thought I was or who, who I think I need to be. Mm. And it's it just a powerful situation to just lean more into rather than just distract and ignore, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's one of the biggest things really is to take some breath and just sit with it mm -hmm. and just let whatever emotion's coming up, just let it, come up and out dude like we we're talking about earlier the inner child work that's mm. that's a big part of a, a lot of these things where is that discomfort coming from and and sitting with it um and acknowledging like oh like i felt like this before i remember like as a kid like oh i you know i got dumped by a girl in kindergarten and she grabbed another boy and was like he's my boyfriend now and like that came up when i was at vipassana and i was like getting caught in my head around like this woman because we were working in the kitchen i was doing long-term service and mm. it was like well why am i feel so like angry and upset about about this and I had to go to the toilet on my own and process myself and like breathe through it and then these amazing insights came so that's an invitation for anyone listening is like kind of like be comfortable in the discomfort like find find that time to be isolated to be on your own and to really feel into what's coming up and where it originates and in some cases that's like in this life it could be ancestral but there's so much like treasure in the uh, shadows absolutely i think that's what breath work and cold exposure like these in environments like holding your breath for a certain period of time and just feeling that and feeling what it feels like to be in an uncomfortable space where your body's trying to do one thing like a primal urge to breathe then you're actually just feeling into that being okay and how that can prepare you for these emotions that do come up mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's why we turn into like the T Rex when we do the breath out. <laughs> what they call it? They're oh, not, no. <laughs> the Dom, not the Doms. Yeah, sorry. It's a <laughs> <kid joke. laughs> yeah, when I was that 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 visual image. Yeah. But it's um it is, it's it it's it's not needing to just react. Yeah. It's like when you walk in the door just taking a few breaths before you get into a a situation with someone that you know is gonna be quite uncomfortable. It's just that that kind of manifest, you know. The yeah. more you sit in that and actively seek it out as well. Mm -hmm. Actively go to things that you know you're gonna be uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. Because I think we need that more. Check-ins, right? So this is one thing that I would normally have started a conversation with, just like say your name, where you're located and what's present for you. It could be one word, it could be a few words, sentences. And like there's a lot of opportunity in relationships, right? To check in with the partner, with friends, with colleagues and just have a moment, maybe once a week or however long, you know, um, however often, mm. just to see where you're at. Because I've definitely in the past have held things to myself in relationships whether they were like my brothers growing up being like, oh, I don't feel like I'm respected and I don't feel like I'm one of you guys anymore. And then like that would then like manifest and mutate into me just like shutting myself away and going um, in to the Amazon, right? Uh, which I'm grateful for. But like the reality is in relationships where they're so fast moving, especially in the city, it's like get an opportunity to drop in with one another, speak to what's alive and then see how you can collaborate and work together to um, start you know walking in a good way i guess mm, how do you balance that out with having fun as well because See, there's the deep work and i'm dire i'm direct and i feel yeah. like i'm i'm very i call for those conversations mm. a lot and i'm like yeah there's a there's a there's a part of me that isn't having fun mm. and i want to have fun as well and it's like there's, there's you know, there's no right or wrong answer here but i guess from your experience mm knowing when to have fun and know when to just be direct and be like, all right, let's check in here, mm -hmm. you know. I think. Well, there's a time and a place for everything, right? And um, I can speak from my experiences now as a single man that I take myself out on dates. Like I have a date night where I'll go to cinema on my own, where I'll like pour myself a bar, light some candles, burn some incense, give myself like a massage, or, like really lovely massage oils and things like that. And that's fun <laughs> for me. And that's the sort of things I imagine I can feel in my field i will be doing with my beloved and so that's my way of calling in a partner but also as a way of having fun with myself and acknowledging that like this is like special this experience like what an honor what a privilege to be in my body to be alive in this day and age you know so that for me is fun but i mean fun joy like that's my like um my like operating system you know that's what i find really attractive in a partner is just mm. to enjoy each moment and have fun conversations and when it needs to be serious like having those check-ins and work through stuff and not get caught up in uh, miscommunication or mixed signals that i've been mm. kind of hardwired to to do that's good you have that awareness mm. thank you for sharing that i think that's going to trigger a lot of men mm. i'm not going to lie do you find <laughs> that no no not in a good way um good do way. you do you find that i think when i first came onto your page i was triggered that was a part of me that was like mm. oh wow i think yeah. one of the posts you shared first line was we slept together yeah and i was like yeah. oh i'm not sure how i feel about that yeah yeah <laughs> well if you if you continue to read on it was like we slept together in the back of a car yeah but we never had like sex it was something along those lines it, the, ultimately i don't think catch, i read on yeah well, see that's the thing a lot of people call me out on that and i'm like well if you'd read it actually wasn't of, like a romantic oh, sexual relationship it's such a metaphor right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but you know it's interesting you say that because um i've had a lot of people brothers this past weekend actually say how like i re represent the divine feminine to them mm. and i'm like cool like i i don't mind that like i either or like obviously i'm doing men's work and there's something about that masculine presence and that penetrative force that you're speaking about that i know isn't within me but if a man can see that and there's if it's an invitation to be more embodied then great you know great like to me like being triggered isn't a negative mm, sure um it's an invitation to step in deeper so um, if there are things I say that are kind of like, you know, shaking people up, then maybe it's a good time to look at those areas. and Absolutely. Yeah, see why. Do you find that when you're around men that perhaps you don't know and you're speaking about, you know, taking yourself on a date? Mm. Do, you, do, do you find that there's an energy there and you're like, oh, okay. Well, I... I um, I wouldn't say I'm cautious about what I say to people, mm. but like I, f I feel into when sure. these things can be relevant. That's important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like know I'm, your audience. Yeah, I'm not down the pub being like, hey, like massage yourselves or like massage your brothers. Like that's another part of what we do as well, which we just did this weekend. It's like actually giving your brother a massage. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be sexual. If anything, it's like 
relief. It's like, oh, God, you've got some strong hands, mate. Mm. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was at a ceremony in, in, in Portugal and I was just holding hands with this, this lad I met and it was it was fucking incredible mm -hmm. just to be with someone in that moment, you know, just seeing them for for them yeah. as a boy, as a man on their journey. Yeah. It's just incredible yeah. just, to, just to sit and feel like you've got each other, you know. Uh -huh everyone's crazy it's, it's, it's the intimacy that i was talking about <laughs> earlier you know and, and, and i really feel like into me you see it's like mm. that invitation to truly be seen and you know it could be a whole hand it could be arm around a brother hugging like i'm a big hugger um i grew up in asia right so when i was in pakistan um we were in quetta which is on the border between afghanistan and um, pakistan and this is during like the height of like 9 11 and we live next door to Al Qaeda and people were burning American flags and things like that in the street. And I remember seeing like men holding hands and like having their arms around each other. And they were so like, there was so much love. And yet what was being um, like broadcast on television were like terrorists and you know, they want to take your freedom. And it was like, oh, that's not the reality of what I'm seeing. This is actually like a really lovely um, culture and the society from what I see amongst men. You know, maybe the relationship with the, with the sisters and, and the women is very different to what we have here. Um, it was quite inspiring, actually. Um, but it took me having to go through this journey to recognize that, oh, okay, that is kind of welcomed. It isn't just gay, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, or like uncomfortable. Right? Mm -hmm. I think gay was only a word like a hundred years ago. Mm. Before that, there was no word for mm. homosexual. It was happy, right? Yeah. 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 It's it's exactly that's what we call it yeah <laughs> madness i heard the other day actually that women there was a there was a big i'd like to get you into it on this how mm. women never got the chance to vote and the whole male approach was that it would make women too a masculine it would mm. make them too if power if women had power mm. they would be too masculinize and it would just it would change the the, the world in, in a not very nice way mm, mm, you know mm. well it's interesting because when we look at what was it fourth fifth wave feminism where we're on now and this idea of like being a boss lady and mm. bitch and boss bitch boss <laughs> I was, yeah i don't like i don't like to use the b word but yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it's an archetype uh, yeah it's an archetype right um and so I mean, I, I'm kind of a bit cautious as to how I'd like to speak this because I know that there's definitely going to be people who have different views and I welcome that and I welcome being educated. Mm. Um, but there's definitely a movement towards like women being like, my career comes first or I'm just about a man with money and success and that's what I find attractive, like that security and things of that nature mm -hmm. and like each to their own. But the idea of like giving women the power to vote, I don't think necessarily would translate to that. Mm. But I acknowledge that like there are different times and people have different views. However, today it's like, no, equality is key. Mm. And um, a big part of like being a feminist as a man or being a masculinist as a woman is to bring the tribes together again. And that's why I love men's work because it is women's work. Brotherhood is sisterhood. And so many sisters have invited them brothers into this work yeah. and and you know and, and i'm like that's why you know one day it will just be all of us doing this together you know and it's happening i mean a sister of mine my housemate here matt's doing a, a retreat this weekend for men held by women and beautiful you know, see more and more of that happening yeah yeah are there any retreats that you know of that have men's circle women's circle at the same space and they go off in different directions and come together yeah because this is uh, you know an idea maybe seeds were planted and i thought mm. that would be a beautiful situation because we can do all this work alone with our um f you know male or female counterparts but it's integrating that whilst being held within it yeah. that could really be potent you know 100 percent um i know that there's definitely i'm sure they're out there um the ones that i know of like men's Expedition, for example um, run by zach uh, avery who i spoke about earlier is talking about doing that having sisters and brothers and they go up snowdonia from what i remember and then that would be where they meet mm. um i know that with sacred sons we have um, our events and then we have the mama's den where like the mothers and the sisters can bring the children and they do their work and that will most likely start to grow and, and develop and there could be an opportunity for us to meet as well 
Um, but it's definitely something that I'm, I'm looking more into and I'd love to bring more of the sacred sexuality, the relationships, the couples, all the relating magnetics and the connectedness to, to men and women. Um, because for me, that was always a big story. It's like, how do I show up for women? And I haven't in the past been as much of a man of integrity as I am now. And I'm really calling in men who hear that and, and acknowledge and, and want to do more for their sisters mm -hmm. as an entry point. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about the Tantra? You touched upon mm. it earlier. Like, could you dispel some myths around Tantra? Because I think there are a lot. And I, I don't know if, if... I actually met a woman last night who was doing uh, workshops on platonic touch. Mm. So it was like an entryway into Tantra, but not calling it that. Just workshop quite mainstream and just getting people to, to touch and be... Mm okay emotions there let's see what comes up and just leaning into just being intimate with strangers yeah um i have a varying points or opinions um i was trained in neo tantra um which is a interesting rework reframe of like traditional tantra so many people have this kind of like conflated idea that tantra is the same as um uh, what do they call that book um the um where there's all the positions um oh yeah karma sutra karma sutra exactly um yeah. and that is something that isn't a pure tantra a pure tantra is very much about union it's like the idea that yoga and all these various meditations sprung from in india um however neo tantra and what i've been um learning is about kind of trauma actually and a lot of what we've been carrying i have been carrying in my body how can i release that through like somatic uh, therapy massage touch platonic um, touch things like that um, eye gazing breath work um, getting in touch with the, my inner child for example having ways to um, express myself in a healthy um, safe space um, there is a sense of like play as well and, and having men and women come together in these um, environments where we can explore the physical body. Um, it doesn't have to be like penetrative or sexual necessarily, but there is something about like unmasking ourselves, derobing, like being physically and also like metaphorically naked in front of someone else to truly like release a lot of what I've been holding back and dropping my um, my boundaries, dropping my walls, right? Um, and so, yeah, in a nutshell, like Tantra for me was a really beautiful way to start to see women, sisters as like a, um, as as these like beings who could bring about like this, this sense, sense of like knowingness in within me. So it's great to do the work with brothers and there's a lot of like that masculine, like primal energy. But when I've been sat with a woman or like a man who's like in that same uh, tantric state of like the masculine and the feminine flowing suddenly it's like oh okay like this is just like a beautiful invitation to to acknowledge there's there's more to my like masculine form than i've been led to believe mm -hmm. is that yeah absolutely or? yeah do you, do you know any resources that people can tap into and stuff or uh, i'm i'm going to be cautious about saying any because um i've the, um, the the particular school that i was uh, working with um there's been a few things that have come up mm -hmm. that I'm not necessarily want to promote. Yeah. Like and anything. Well, I think even just speaking to that, it's important mm. to feel and and and, and ask yeah. questions. And yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, when, when people speak about plant medicine, like I've had loads of like yeah. experiences and I know of like really like men and women, brothers and sisters who are in integrity, who hold space shamans facilitators that type of thing and i can make recommendations in that field like here's a place this village in the amazon that you can check out um whereas like with tantra it's like it's, it's fraught, especially neo tantra it's fraught with um just like the human condition there's people who are in integrity and there's people who aren't and so um <clears throat> in any case where people are arriving with trauma where they're vulnerable um they can get taken advantage of by the leaders or by you know the, the people that put on a pedestal and so um 
I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying find it for yourself or if there's someone like me who you who you vibe with. <laughs> Don't like, hold me accountable. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, exactly. That's, that's part of it. It's like, that, you know, it they're is, sovereign, yeah. they make their own decisions, but sure. like, it, what's that based on, you know? Is, 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 is there transparency in that, you know? Mm. So, yeah, you know, they can speak to me and, you know, I can I can speak to a few. I, I, know, I know a brother um, who, um, who's doing good work, mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I'll, yeah, if anyone's interested. Richard, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And have a person to person yeah. conversation where you can ask questions. Exactly. Yeah. Is it right for you? For you know? sure. Because it is quite shiny. It's quite lurid. Uh, and, um, yeah, there's a few um, of them plus faces around. Yeah. There? And it's not just about like, well, yeah, I won't go into yeah. too much. I, I, I would love to get your insights onto plant medicine because we have mm. touched upon it. Mm. And I do take the opportunity when I can to speak to people about it. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's taken, mm, uh, how can I define what I mean? It's it's taken the world in a certain direction, and it's kind of like this melt whirlwind of of different things that are happening all over the all over the globe. It feels mm. like more and more. Mm. Um, what do you think is really really happening there when you know you're you're sitting in ceremony and you're taking a psychedelic? Mm. You know, what is what is happening there? Maybe specifically for men, mm. and why can it be so powerful? So what feels right for me to share is that everyone's experience is different mm -hmm. and that um, when done with good facilitators, people who've been recommended, mm -hmm. there's a great opportunity to, to learn more about the psyche, right, about consciousness. Um, my personal belief is that there is more than meets the eye. That when I've been in these spaces, particularly as a man, like I've seen and experienced things that most likely are in my head, most likely are from my imagination, but that doesn't necessarily um, take away from the fact that it's special to me, right? Like I believe that everything I see or can conceive is real, is true. Like the quantum feel, right? The idea that like potential is infinite. So um, whether you call it God, creator, life, that's that's just uh, semantics. Um, the reason why I think it's become like mainstream potentially is that it, we are reaching a time in, in human history where the jungle, these plants are, are are starting to make their way into the world to 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 shift the perspective to to bring people back into good relation with nature. Because as I'm sure you can just look out the window here in Bethnal Green, it's like there's so much traffic, there's so much pollution, mm. there's a lot of angst and anger and just like stark energy. And these medicines can help bring that out and, and into the open and start to, I don't like to use the word heal, but start to like, you know, bring us back into into um, integrity, back into alignment. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and it points me on to just feeling based like how can we tap into that space a bit mm -hmm. more and process the one thing i notice sitting in ceremony a feeling and processing is feels like so relevant mm -hmm. and whether it's the time we are in or what i need the most mm -hmm. but and, and often that happens it, it, it kind of gives you what you need processing and just being more intimate with my feelings mm -hmm. and allowing what, however long i need to just stare into that fire mm -hmm. and just go in a little bit more without the distraction mm. without the luring element of my phone in the room or mm. other people who I'm drawn to and just to really turn that gaze inward mm. I think that is like the most powerful thing that I've experienced yeah. in those settings yeah and I think for men it it can really allow that like instantaneously mm. Can I can I speak a little yeah, bit? To yeah, this? Because I I agree. However, it doesn't just have to be plant medicine. No, you know that's one thing that I'm really starting to acknowledge um, over time. Is like as much as like they played a role in my life, so has Vipassana. Mm -hmm. um, Ten days of silent meditation, right? No phone, no pen, no paper. Mm -hmm. um, but especially sweat lodge. Being have you? Have you been I've not sweat, been a sweat lodge. Sweat lodge, like these ancient technologies. It's just like sitting in um, a, a small kind of igloo basically out in nature bringing the stones in i've been cooking in the fire having the water pourer pour water steam and just hot breath in the dark of this 
womb-like space is so powerful and that same thing about sitting with the feelings like the uncomfortableness the sweating the heat the 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 the, the desire to get out to, to to crawl out and just breathing through it singing praying through it like that is hugely beneficial and i think mm. a lot of men particularly you can really benefit from that because tears come out when unexpectedly visions come through family and the past ancestry things like that and plant medicine as much as i love it i've definitely started to recognize well you know in the past these were just like for the shaman they would be the ones who take the medicine and they would share their insights and visions with the village or the tribe right and so as great as it is, I think a lot of these things are starting to get adopted and maybe misused or um, like overused as well overused. and become a crutch, right? Like mm. a bit of a bypassing situation going on. But I can imagine, I'm t I, I guess, like <laughs> that you can't really abuse sweat lodges. Like you just go, you sweat, and then you come out and you're like reborn and you can do that every week. But eventually it's going to be like, okay, like <laughs> I don't need to do it all the time because it's so beneficial. It's like, again, being reborn. Mm. So that's one thing I'd recommend. Absolutely. Find your cl local sweat lodge. <laughs> do you see them popping up? <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's quite a few here in the UK and they don't all come from the same tradition. So the one that we've been sitting with, the Sacred Sons and a bunch of other places is like Inipi, which is the Lakota, North American nation tradition. Um, but they have like Temascal in Mexico, which um, at like Medicine Festival, for example, is on offer. Um, I know there's been like various ones. My mother even told me she's Ethiopian that they have the same thing in Ethiopia and I was like yeah I'm gonna go there and discover that and sweat with my my brothers and sisters on the African side mm, <laughs> yeah. beautiful it sounds like a nice uh, like darkness therapy almost yeah. but not as intense and grueling and enduring like in, in probably in a sh short space yeah, of time for more sure. a healthier dose of, hours, yeah. of just that yeah yeah, man, it sounds powerful. Thanks for bringing that yeah. in. But yeah, and, and just, you know, to anyone who is interested in plant medicine, all these things, you know, I'm not saying, you know, like it, whatever's true for you, real for you in that moment. Um, but just, uh, I, I find like this this thing about like trends and people jump onto things and it's like, just do your research. Um, if it keeps coming up, then that could be a message, you know, but mm -hmm. um, definitely like, sit with it for a couple of weeks before you make any decisions. I've been sitting with ayahuasca for 10 years and I've not <laughs> gone there. Oh, have you no, not? No. Oh, okay. So, uh, psilocybin mushrooms is yep. what, I, what I've, re I've never used, I've never taken them recreationally. It's always been like sitting by, I did them by myself for many years mm. until recently when I was using them as, in a ceremony setting. But mm. it was always, it was, I'd always, uh, the, the dosage as well is obviously super important. Mm -hmm. I would always have, you know, a, 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 a small dose, but it would allow me to be in my body mm -hmm. and move through it in a way that felt healthy. Mm -hmm. But just being my own, so again, it's not like doing it with friends where you're constantly in and out of each other's experience. Mm -hmm. It was a very much more, uh, right, there's some things that I am um, calling in here. And, and the direction that I'm going is, 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 is I need some guidance on. And it was just all coming from me, but I was allowed to just get into my body that little bit more. And it's it's beautiful, man. I, I like, I, I really, like that for me has been one of the best things that, that I've done. But I, again, I'm speaking to what you said, you don't, I, I've never wanted to do it straight after. Mm -hmm. Like six months go by and I'm like, oh, yeah, potentially. And then another six months, okay, mm -hmm. let's go. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's never been like a, yeah just a, a, a constant for me it's always yeah. been a checking in yeah. and a reference point almost but yeah well you know it's it's good that you have that relationship you mm -hmm. know because there are people out there who probably have like addictive qualities for example i mean i don't even like to use the word addicted but or dick um addict but mm. there there are people who will abuse whatever is in front of them and so um I was yeah I just say like with you like in that situation that's the way to approach it just to take some time mm -hmm. before set your intentions purify the body the mind the spirit if you can and just mm -hmm. come to it in a good way and so that afterwards there's like a healthy integration time as well I've sat with ayahuasca 30 plus times and majority of that was in my early 20s and I was drinking beer and like by the second third day after the ceremony it was like well, what's all this like all these amazing 
insights are just like melted away so i kept having to come back and keep learning the same thing and eventually the vipassana and the men's work came through and i was like oh, okay <laughs> i don't need to keep going back to my old habits because i am not that mm. old self anymore and that's what um, a lot of these medicines have done for me it's just like drop the story and yeah create a new narrative <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah beautiful man mm. um what do you want to speak to as we as we wrap things up i could talk to you all day <sighs> hopefully we'll get most of the day to talk to you as well after. Yeah. But um, are you taking one-on-one -on -one work? Yeah, and, I do one-on-one. -on -one, um, and uh, in the new year, I've got a course that I'm doing with um, a psycho psychotherapist. Yeah, I think that's the right phrase. She's not psycho, but she mm. does psychotherapy. Yeah, yeah. Psychosomatic. Is, that's a different yeah, word, yeah, psychosomatic. Alec Azam. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, we'll be doing that in the new year in January. So check out my socials for that. Mm -hmm. um, Sega Sons, do, we'll be doing events throughout the uh, year in Europe. Um, and uh, we're doing another big EMX um, in Devon, most likely in June. Um, in terms of like a final thought, you mm. know what's funny? I just looked up at this picture of um, Grayson, um, my housemate too, Matt's cat, and it just reminded me of like the magic mm. of like animals and that primal energy and um, something as a man. I had a brother just sent me a voice note earlier, if one of the bros on my team. Um, one of the participants and he's like how do i tap into that masculine energy after leaving you know he lives in italy he doesn't have brothers around him he doesn't have the opportunity to do the work and it's like that primal energy how do how do you keep that alive how do you continue to work with it and i'm a big believer in embodiment that's all that i'm talking about all my socials me doing like chin-ups and like playing with my staff and um handstands and it's just like any moment you can during the day another brother scotty actually shared this he's like even when you hit the kettle drop down do 10 press ups mm -hmm. like find those moments in the day to tap into that primal energy i get barefoot every day go stand on the grass somewhere breathe just be in nature as much as possible um, and i find for men particularly in this modern world particularly in the city just to find those moments to like tap into that like yeah just there's something beyond the a, a, beyond and above your story and your like stresses and strains like really helps bring me back into center and i can continue in a good way a bit like you're saying earlier with the cold right and breath work like finding those moments to challenge and push yourself so that anything else just water for ducks back you know? mm. beautifully put man <laughs> it's a nice little yeah. uh trailer for the podcast right there <laughs> <laughs> thanks man i'm so happy our paths have crossed yeah for sure happiness doesn't do justice i'm, I'm grateful Joy. yeah yeah that really am man that's that's an, that's another piece actually i will speak about so the difference between happiness and joy mm. uh, many people talk about wanting to be happy but happiness for me is that pursuit right the chase of happiness mm. and it seems like without this you can't be happy with that you, you know so for me it's like cultivating joy where can you have joy in your life what lights you up? what gives you like just purpose and one person mm. brothers my one of my coaches actually said to me um to find your purpose find what in this life really breaks your heart what truly just devastates you what cracks you open and that piece of work focusing your energy on that is your purpose and that will bring you true joy beautiful yeah i've heard that way into something before it's true like what do you really care about mm. like what are you not what you're living f f well what are you living for mm. what would you die for mm. so what would you die for and then you'll directly understand what you're going to live for there you, go. you know that's what's up. Yeah. Yes, Sheep. brother. Beautiful, brother. Thank Thanks, you. man. Let's wrap it up. That was awesome. Thank you, people. Appreciate you as always. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you found this valuable. Let us know what resonated the most in the comments. Appreciate you as always. Until next time.